Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I have some advice for you guys and gals. As someone who lost over 100 pounds, and technically I've done it twice, uh, because the first time I was a very, very young man, uh, I was 300 plus pounds, got all the way down to 170, and then when I was really, really sick, um, I spent 10 months in bed sick, was really depressed, uh, then had a physically debilitating illness, and then got depressed. Uh, gained, had quit working out. I had been in shape. Had been a lifter. Had you know deadlifted over six hundred pounds. All that stuff already. And then I got sick and uh, couldn't train for three years. Uh, depressed with everything going on, um, and and I ballooned back up to close to three hundred pounds again, and then lost it. So as someone who's kind of been through this journey twice. And now as a full-time coach uh, at the age of 47, uh, and having observed all this and had clients who've lost a lot of weight, I've, I've got some tips for people. And number one, um, I, I think this is, is the single most important tip. Stop looking for shortcuts. If you need to lose a lot of weight, stop looking for shortcuts. There are none. Um, stop trying to set impossible time frames. What you have to understand, you're going to be in this body the rest of your life. You're going to be in this body the rest of your life. Uh, and it's not about shortcuts. It, it is really about lifestyle change. It is about uh, loving yourself and learning to accept the journey instead of just seeing, oh, this stuff I have to. No, you've got to learn to just get in and love what you're doing. you got to love yourself. But you have to accept that it's going to be a process. And accordingly, some of the biggest mistakes people make, and I'm not saying I didn't do a little of this early on. I probably jumped in way too fast on some stuff, but it was for me. I was young, uh, even though I was very overweight. I was healthy enough to pull it off. Uh, you know, again, very young man, 20-ish or whatever. Uh, I was able to do these things faster than, than you might expect. But keeping in mind... Uh, it still took me a year to lose that 100 pounds. And I would say for most people, that's excessive. Okay? I want to be clear. That's going to be extremely difficult. I had to throw my whole life into doing that. Okay? To do that in one year, pretty much it was absolute dedication. I literally had to dedicate my life to doing that. So for other people, uh, that, that could be a bit much, you know, so let's say you have a hundred pounds or 50 pounds or whatever to lose. It's, it may be a point where you just say, look, it might take me two years. As long as I'm consistent though, I will eventually get there. Okay. And you know, people always pull these, these 30 day transformations and I, I hate to have to be the bearer of bad news. Most of those are fake. Okay. Uh, most of the people who do those amazing transformations, they are ob ob obviously have been previously fit, previous lifting experience. They bloat up for the before pictures intentionally, make themselves look way worse, lighting, um, you know, all that stuff. Those are not true transformations of people who are out of shape. So just, just be aware of that. Uh, there's a lot of fake ones, and that has been a thing. Even when I started, that was a thing. It was put in magazines, these magazine ad transformations client transformations. Okay, that's that's all fake. There's no shortcuts. Now, am I saying some of the modern medicines, Ozempic and other stuff can't help? Of course they can. And then if your doctor can prescribe that, then that may be the route that you need to go. Um, I don't hate on that, by the way. A lot, of, a lot of trainers out there do, but it's because, oh, they don't want people doing it outside of, of their help exclusively and it's like well i'm sorry you don't always understand the struggles of obese people and i can say as someone who's been there um i, I don't hate on that like you do what you need to do but keep in mind that's still not going to be a crazy shortcut okay it's not going to be a crazy shortcut and you're not going to be on it forever either so the the point is if you're going to do that understand that it is about lifestyle change because if you go back to the if you lose 100 pounds and you go back to the same lifestyle you'll regain it i mean case in point my lifestyle as far as what i was eating wasn't even as bad as it was when i was younger and heavier when i regained it but because i couldn't i was inactive because of being sick physically sick and then depressed on top of it um, it was way easier to regain it. It was easier to regain it to someone who had gained a ton of muscle, but I started losing all that muscle. Okay. All right. There's no shortcuts. The other thing I'm going to say, um, and I didn't do this my first time around, 
lifting weights. Um, getting in the gym, lifting weights, best thing you can possibly do also. Why? Because it keeps your metabolic rate up. Because as you lose weight, if you're losing muscle, you're already going to lose some, some energy turnover just from weighing less and losing fat. But if you're losing muscle tissue, your metabolism is going to go way down. Uh, so again, if we're going to play the long game and not look for shortcuts, you need to lift weights. Gain as much muscle as you possibly can. And I know a lot of men and women, and I'm not trying to get as jacked as you. Trust me, you're not going to get as jacked as me. You don't have to worry about that. I guarantee you, if you start lifting really, really hard and gain as much muscle as you possibly can, in three years, you're not going to be as big as I am. Don't worry about it. So just stop that nonsense. Um, I'm, I'm over 200 pounds with abs. <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about that. Just gain as much muscle as you possibly can in your first couple years. Because if you do that, guess what? It's going to make this process easier. It's going to make it easier to keep the body fat off. Your, your metabolic rate is going to be higher even when you are sleeping. Okay? That means you're not going to have to restrict yourself as much. So again, it kind of comes back to the point. There's no shortcuts. All this stuff is a long game. You've got to learn to change your lifestyle. You have to learn that you can't put time frames. Well, I'm going to do this in three months, X, X amount of weight. Well, that's well and good, but that can put a lot of stress on you to mess it up. And then you're seeing start points and end points. I don't recommend you do that. You need to be thinking lifestyle. Lifestyle. And as long as I'm consistent with this, it will eventually come off. As long as I'm consistently in a small calorie deficit, as long as I'm consistently getting my fiber and my protein and, and my walking and my uh, lifting in, it will eventually come off. Okay? So, so don't try to speed the process up, uh, you know, by doing extreme things that you don't need to do. And I'm not going to say I didn't do some of that early on the first time I did. Like I got up to where I, I ran till exhaustion every day. And I used running and cardio to take it off originally. Then I got into lifting. I got down to 170 uh, and really got into lifting. And then I built up from there. But uh, my advice to people would be to not take it that extreme. Focus on lifting weights. Do enough cardio, do walking and stuff to burn through the extra calories. Focus on lifting weights. Focus on getting quality protein, quality food in. Okay? And just get your energy turnover and metabolic rate up. And just chip away at that weight month after month after month after month. Just keep chipping away at it. And if you do it that way, it's going to stay off. Okay? It's, you're going to keep it off. And that's the way. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys and gals next time.